stock market analysis and projections. But first, important information. We always show this slide because this is important. This talks about our approach to the market and our analysis and what it means for you when you use what we share and the importance of taking trade ownership. In our video library, which is massive, I do have a video in there about trade ownership. I think it's important to watch. So uh, no matter what we say, the trade has to be yours. Stock market analysis, S&P 500 review. We're going to look at the weekly and daily, do multiple time frame analysis. And we're going to look at the warnings from the Dow. But we're starting to get warnings from other indexes today as we're doing this show because the market is under severe pressure here on Friday, April 12th. And when we look at it, we may actually see some other breakdowns. But the Dow is the first one to have broken down on the short-term chart. And that would be a warning to me that the high, high caps are under a lot of pressure uh, when I see the Dow being the leader. We'll look at the VIX and we'll look at sector analysis. And we'll take a quick look at the market condition monitor symbol review so you get an idea of which are the strongest and which are the weakest stocks. So a lot that we're going to look at right now. We're going to start out by looking at the S&P 500. So you can see in here that we have been talking about a period of risk that was actually March through May on the weekly chart. So that is uh, an, an important place for us to start. Let me just get my pointers lined up here uh, because we're getting it turning over. Now, the S&P 500 momentum over here is flattening out, but it hasn't turned negative yet, but it probably will in the next couple of days. We have downturn in the NASDAQ uh, on the momentum. That was the first uh, one to turn down with the Dow. And look over here at the S&P 500 as we're getting down under the warning level and approaching a very key level right over here. So let's look again. This is our period of risk, this period where the stock market gets into that corrective phase. We talked about it losing somewhere between 5.3% and 8%, which to me is a bullish call, believe it or not, because I thought about uh, the, the, the duration of this advance. It doesn't leave a lot of time in here for a decline. It sinks with a daily low out in mid-May as the first time that there's a synchronization between the cyclical patterns. That's very key. Now, you can see in here the length of this decline right over here was about five or six weeks. This one was longer. And right now, this is just barely over one week to the downside and closer to two. So it's just starting this decline in here. That's why we call it the period of risk, because that's the period of a likely correction. Now, I drew this bottom channel in here because the break of here of the 78.6% warning level. So you can see in here the minor cycles right in here on the daily chart and this upward conditions and the upward resumptions and then right over here this turning neutral. So this turn neutral, the momentum condition on the Slim Ribbon PO turned neutral here in the last several days. At the same time, you get a break today of the warning level. This number, 510435, that we've had listed here for three weeks, is the number that we said is the breakdown level. And once it gets under there, it confirms this minor cycle has turned negative. And what that means is that, well, it can fall here for some number of days, then probably get another rally, but the next cycle will configure negatively. So that means that the dates that you can see here on the minor cycle, that's 528. The date over here is 528 on the dominant cycle. And that aligns with this low right over here, which actually probably needs to be pushed out a little bit further right over here based on what we're seeing in the daily chart. So it calls for towards the end of May when this corrective period ends. I think 5.3% at the intermediate 23.6% is too bullish and that it is very likely it's going to get down to that monthly support level or the intermediate 38.2, which is 48.23, that's 48.35. So it's right in that area of the low 48s that I think is the likelihood 
uh, of the decline. We thought all along it would be a 350 points to 500 point correction. It got up to 52, 64 uh, in that level. So uh, that's, you know, 4,900 to 4,750 based on the amount of correction uh, that we expected it to be in there. So we're in entering into this corrective period the warning that we get right over here on the daily chart. I want to look at the Dow, that's dollar sign DJI on the daily chart. And I want you to see this important analysis right over here. While the market was rallying, each of these cycles was configured in a positive way and translating in a positive way. Take the cycle analysis workshop so you understand there's a glossary in there positive configuration and translation. You could see the slim ribbon giving it the support that so often happens right there. And then the crossover, the Dow turning negative. You see it red over here and breaking those cycle supports right here. That says that this decline comes for another few days, likely has a rally and then gets slammed again. Yes, out over here into late May. That's the projection over here, the Dow having broken those key levels already, where the S&P 500 has not broken that key level yet. So the high caps are really leading this move uh, to the downside. So I really wanted you to see that so you could see that there was a breakdown in there. I'm going to move another chart in right now that I think is very significant. This is the S&P 500 weekly chart. Let me just blow this up for you right there. And yes, you're looking at SPX with uh, two moving averages and our reversal scout on there. You can see it flattening out in the momentum, but there's no cycle analysis on here. What I've done is I've gone and taken the work that RV and Katie do, and I put that onto my own charts, which is looking at the correlations in the sectors. I'm going to go to a different drawing right now so that you can see as I bring in that cycle analysis how important this is. So I'm going to go to spe the special uh, uh, SPX versus sector analysis and wham, wow, look at that. I mean, that is fantastic. There is so much information on here, it's going to blow you away. This is that S&P 500. You could see that dark dashed line. That uh, this, that's the cycles I just showed you on the S and P 500, and turning over here in the period of risk. These gray boxes that you see right there are showing you what happens when these sectors correlate into the same time frames, and you get the corrections. You got a five week correction right over there. That was uh, back in February, January, February of 23. You got a 10 week correction over here, August uh, through. Uh, October of 23 right there. And you can see we're expecting five to 10 weeks right over here. Right now it's projecting sometime out into lit, mid to late May. But look at these other sectors in here. So this is the SMH that actually bottoms a little bit earlier than the S&P 500. This one right over here is the XLK. So that, you know, makes sense that, you know, the, the tech sectors are maybe bottom a little bit earlier than the stock market or they'll bottom in line with it. This one right over here uh, is the Dow Jones Transport. So that's got a longer cycle that comes out into June for its corrective period. Here you can see right there when I look at this XLF, the financials are even longer this right over here is XBI, that's longer, XLI is longer, the industrials. So you can see out over here that this corrective period may actually push out into June based on what we're seeing here. That says that the springtime period over here is a problem as you get out into June. You may get this sharp move down to the downside in the S&P 500 and then get a rally and then struggle to get traction out here into June before you can get into the synced rising phases, June through September. That's this upward cycle right there. You see the upward phases right in here and what that brings you, those rallies. That's why I don't believe that the bear market, the bull market's ending or a bear market is beginning. You can see that right over there. That really looks to me like uh, the next flag to form in these cycles. Flag, flag, 
flag. You can see that. When the translation has it peaking late in the cycle, there's less time to decline, as you can see. And that's what we have here. This is a bull market correction that's likely to occur. Every one of these come down and test the 34-week moving average. Here's a 34-week moving average over here, under 4,900 right there. That, again, to me, feels like an optimist level for it to stop maybe closer to 4800 or in the 47s makes sense to me but then that li very likely to be an important buying opportunity so that is a chart that i thought it was important to share with you uh and here is that dow chart right over there let's go back to the spx s p 500 right over here and uh I'll go back to the weekly chart and there's that corrective period that we're talking about right there out into this mid to late may period and as i said the traction may be tough to come by and uh, then get some period out over here out into june where it really bounces somewhere near the bottom before you really get into that next rising phase which very likely takes the market to new highs so overall this is a bullish analysis looking for a corrective period that we're i think we're in right now we have talked about this period of risk and you see the market starting to give way you see the warnings uh in the breakdowns in there let's switch over to uh looking at our mcm this is the market condition monitor and we're looking at the short-term time frame. Uh, those of you that have level three and level four have access to this. Uh, and we have some amazing updates coming to these that are just fantastic. So we're looking at the short term. This shows you, um, I, I wanna go back to the uh, indexes in here. And uh, here's the indexes. And you can see in here that what we have is the QQQ. Let me just refresh this, make sure that I have the most current data. And there we go. So we have the QQQ as slightly bullish. Remember this week on the short term uh, that we said that it wasn't doing as badly as the rest of the indexes, the SPY slightly bearish. So these would which, which show you and the diamonds is bearish, of course, and we showed the breakdown in there. Any more downside that we get in here and these are going to change to bearish and very bearish. Let's take a look here at the intermediate uh, there and you can see in here, they were all bullish for such a long period of time, and they now neutralized. So you can see the down ticks right in here says that the, the conditions have gotten worse. Let's go back to short term right over here so you can get an idea of what the stock conditions are. Just going to scroll this up so that we can get some uh, more in there showing. And we'll look at the trade setup conditions. The ones that are still very bullish, well, of course, we see the uh, energy market moving up and surging today and the uh, metals markets moving up. So you see USO, which is oil, Exxon, silver. Microsoft is still very bullish. That one is still hanging in there with Qualcomm in that tech sector, silver, gold. Let's scroll down here to the ones that are still very bullish. As you could see right over here, Micron, GDX, of course, the miners, uh, uh, Broadcom, uh, Google, still very good. Of course, PAAS, which is a silver stock. DBA, uh, uh, First Solar, the solar stocks uh, looking good there. Amazon, you see they're still very bullish right there. And that's the end of the ones that are very bullish on the short term. Let's take a look at the trade setup conditions of very bearish. And you could see that right over here. This takes the, all of our uh, proprietary algorithms and put the, puts them in here and gives us the trade setup condition for the short term. In other words, you're looking at some weeks out there uh, and you can see in here very bearish, the ones that are listed in there. Of course, we've seen the bond market, TLT turned down, Boeing, a horrible stock, Starbucks looking really bad. And that's the end of the ones that are very bearish. And you can see the bearish ones right in here. And you can uh, go to uh, intermediate term and do the same thing right over here. Or if you want to go to near term for the interday traders or for level four only, you can go to that interday right over there. So uh, well, this is just uh, amazing analysis. And a look at the market condition indicator and the conditions uh, that we see them 
uh, right now in the stock market short term how we look in interday let's look at that near term right there you can see that qqq has not turned bearish yet but the spy the iwm and the dai are very bearish you can see right over there and just for the interday trader short term look at that very bearish the nq the qqq not quite getting the very bearish and that is a look at the s p 500 again and our a market condition monitor which is just absolutely mind-boggling just we have these great tools for you uh and uh please do uh consider uh our uh level four level three or four uh or upgrade to that if you want to get the market condition monitor it's a fantastic application. That is a look at the stock market today. I hope you have loved uh, what you saw there. Uh, this is a reminder that our cycle analysis workshop uh, special is starting today. Get these big discounts. Click that learn more button at the top of askslim.com. Watch that little video in there or sign up or send Matt questions that you might have on our cycle analysis workshop.